Hold me close till I get up Time is barely on our side I don't wanna waste what's left Microsoft planning to move its Azure data centers underwater. Let's find out. There are an estimated 8 million data centers worldwide processing our online lives and managing the 2.5 quintillion bytes of data created each day by individuals and businesses. Everything seems to be on the cloud nowadays, and the demand for more cloud-based services is only growing. To meet this demand, we will need more data centers, and the servers have to be as close as possible to their users for lightning-fast access. That's why Microsoft is trying out an unusual solution. They're experimenting with installing data centers on the ocean floor. The concept of an underwater data center emerged on the scene at Microsoft in 2014 during Think Week as a way to provide quick cloud services to coastal communities and save energy overall. Enter Project Natick, Microsoft's first test of the concept. In 2018, the company submerged the Northern Isles, a purpose-built data center in the Pacific Ocean, just off the coast of Scotland's Orkney Islands. It was the perfect place for this experiment due to its relatively cool temperate waters. Its power grid is also completely sourced from solar and wind power, placing it firmly in line with Microsoft's energy-saving objectives. The Northern Isles contain 12 racks, 864 servers, and 27.6 petabytes of storage. For reference, that's roughly the equivalent computing power of hundreds of thousands of high-end consumer-grade computers. With Project Natick, Microsoft wanted to specifically test just how well an underwater data center would perform and if it would even be reliable. The results were encouraging to say the least. Upon retrieving the Northern Isles in 2020, they had found that out of the 864 servers on board, only 8 had failed. This meant the failure rate in water was roughly one-eighth of their land-based data centers. Microsoft believes this can be attributed to two main things. The first is the temperature in the Northern Isles. They were able to consistently cool all of the equipment on board by locating it underwater. They also filled the sealed environment with nitrogen, which is less corrosive than oxygen, making their components more resistant to rust and regular wear and tear. This allowed the Northern Isles to maintain optimal performance without running the risk of overheating. The second key to the Northern Isles' low failure rate is a bit simpler. Just like lights-out data centers on the surface, the absence of a staff bodes very well for its reliability. Microsoft believed that leaving the data center unattended and free from human interference eliminated the variable of human error from its maintenance altogether. Project Natick proved to be a huge success. Microsoft hopes to roll out more underwater data centers in the future, and eventually all of their Azure cloud services. They're also hoping that this will help them achieve their goal of becoming a fully carbon-negative company by 2030. With more than half of the world's population living within 120 miles off the coast, Microsoft is setting the stage for how other companies power their cloud services in the future. All of this currently comes at an environmental cost. While data centers contribute around 0.3% to overall carbon emissions, the entire information and communications technology ecosystem accounts for more than 2%. That's roughly the same as the aviation industry's emissions from fuel. The premise of better, more reliable performance at no cost to the environment seems too good to be true. It almost is. Underwater data centers use less energy and they run on renewable energy sources. Project Natick is already informing conversations about energy sustainability in order to build more data centers that offer faster speeds than ever before to those within their service area. Microsoft's year-long effort proved underwater data centers is feasible, whether that's logistically, economically, or environmentally. If all goes well with the tests in the upcoming years, underwater cloud storage could be the way of the future.